Welcome everyone to this week's video. Today we are on Fish Friday number 124 and we have a good one for you today. Today's fish is a one of my favorite fish in all of the world and I know I say that about every fish but this one is especially true. Um, I, took, uh, I took a particular interest to this fish when I got into college and first learned about it. Um, it's super neat. I hope you enjoy this and it's just really important especially to the United States. And it has an interesting fact that might surprise you. Today's fish that we're going to be talking about is, bam, the American eel. Now, the American eel, or scientific name Anguilla rostrata, again, that is Anguilla rostrata, it is part of the family Anguillidae, which is the family of freshwater eels. Um, now, freshwater eels, I know you might be thinking, Ping, we did a freshwater fish last week and you switched back and forth. Well, there's a couple of reasons for this. Um, one of them, you'll understand, it's kind of saltwater, but it's also primarily freshwater. Um, but then it's interesting fact will be the reason why I chose this fish. Um, now the American eel, Anguilla rostrata, is native to all of the eastern coastline and rivers. And it's called the American eel, but it's pretty much both of the Americas. It's native to all of the rivers and the coastlines from Venezuela up to Greenland, including Iceland. Um, it has an extremely, extremely large range. And it will live in all freshwater streams and lakes that are connected to the Atlantic Ocean um, or the Gulf of Mexico. So it can be found in all of those coastline rivers, those rivers that will connect there. If it can swim upstream, it will be from there. It was there. And that is because this fish is actually a catadromous fish. Now, a catadromous fish is different than a lot of other fish. When people think of migration patterns of fish, they usually think of like the salmon, which it lives in the ocean, then migrates upstream to spawn. That is called an anadromous fish. A catadromous fish is actually the exact opposite. This fish, the American eel, and it is a fish, by the way, it is a fish, um, lives in fresh water and then migrates to salt water to reproduce. It actually migrates from all the streams, and this is a really neat thing. It migrates all the freshwater streams and lakes and rivers that it lives in from, you know, like I said, from Greenland, Greenland to Venezuela. They all live there, and then they all migrate to the Sargasso Sea. And the Sargasso Sea is not particularly large. Um, I should have had this pulled up. The Sargasso Sea, is where a lot of this weed, sargassum seaweed, congregates due to how the um, ocean currents um, all kind of line up right there. It's a little bit of a deposition zone. Um, so that's where that this fish, all these fish go to this area to spawn. Now in terms of when it's living in the freshwater, it seems to be that they primarily prefer sandy or muddy bottom habitats, but they can actually be found in a variety of habitats. It's not like they're very specific. And when you think about the size of their range, you'd think, yeah, they shouldn't be that specific. They obviously have a very large thermal tolerance, um, but pretty much they're found anywhere that has a place that they can hide. And they'll hide in all kinds of nooks and crannies. Um, burrows, snags, rock cracks, uh, just a lot of plants in an area. I mean, there's really no limitations to where this thing will try to hide. And so there's not really too many limitations on its habitat other than it needs fresh water versus salt water. And it needs clean fresh water, I should say that. This, sea, this fish does seem to be relatively susceptible to pollution factors. Now, in terms of size, it can be a large-ish fish when it's fully grown. They'll grow up to 1.22 meters, which is about four feet in length. And they'll weigh up to seven and a half kilograms, which is 17 pounds. 
Um, that's an extremely large fish. They are extremely muscular. Um, in fact, if you go onto websites that hold lake records, uh, lake fishing records, um, the American eel actually does, um, will pop up in some older things. And in fact, I should have looked this up. We go to the International Game Fish Association. I talk about the International Game Fish Association quite often. Um, search world records. Eventually. Okay. Let's look for the American eel. I bet it's down at eel. American. Should have hit this go. So the world record is 4.21 kilograms. Well, that would make sense. This is an all tackle. Um, people have probably sampled for this seal and just gotten bigger ones. That's got to be what happens because I know I've definitely heard of these being um, a little bit larger than five kilograms. Um, but in terms of body shape, it's an eel. Um, if you know what eels look like, you know what this looks like. I mean, it's got that very long cylindrical body. It's got that conical shaped head. Um, it's got these small pectoral fins that are actually semi well developed. Um, and it's got this continuous dorsal fin. So the dorsal fin is connected to the caudal fin and then it's connected to the anal fin. And it's just one it looks like it's one continuous fin. it's just they're all connected um their eyes are relatively smallish um but they're very well developed they do they can see extremely well actually um which is surprises a lot of people in terms of teeth they're really small peg like good for just all sorts of different um food that it can consume i mean It'll consume kind of anything, but we'll get into that in just a second. Now, it does, it actually does have scales. A lot of people think that eels are scaleless, and it's actually a pretty good characteristic because they do have scales, but they're extremely small uh, cycloid scales, which are really tiny, thin, circular scales, and they're actually embedded under the skin to where you need a microscope to see them and they're irregular it's not like they're completely throughout they're very irregular from what i understand um, i've never looked at these under a microscope because if you're in north america this is pretty much the only eel you're gonna get um so it's not like it's easy to compute anything now my description was kind of the adult stage and I say that because it actually has um, kind of multiple life stages. You can see here, this looks like a juvenile. And it kind of looks different than this one. Um, well, that's because it actually has multiple life stages. It actually has six life stages. So it has eggs that are laid, like I said, in the sargassum seed. And then it goes to, when the eggs hatch, they become this leptocephalus or leptocephali. This is their larval stage. And it's also called like a leaf eel sometimes. Um, there's some pictures out there that are really misunderstood in this form, but it pretty much seems that in this stage, they just catch the current and just kind of float around like a leaf would do for wind currents. They just kind of float. And then whenever they get to a coastline, that's when they'll reach the um, glass eel stage. So the glass eel stage will look kind of like this. It's this super clear, um, translucent body style, um, but they're actually starting to like become that sort of eel-ish shape. Um, and then they transfer to the Elver stage, which you could think this would be like your preteen uh, stage. Um, it's starting to get pigmented and they're starting to go up like upriver, um, migrate upriver. 
and you know starting to get that development of pigmentation um, they're really growing from these brackish waters so in the glacial they're kind of in the coastline and starting to get up river elvers is when they really start to move up river from what i understand then you have the yellow eel which the yellow eel would be like your immature adult so post teenager like teenage sort of thing these are immature adults this is their growing stage um this is a yellow eel um and it's it is actually pretty hard to find pictures of these um of just eels so this would be a yellow eel you know it is growing this is when they grow they are not sexually mature and they spend all this time growing but they develop this kind of olive green to yellowish green back in this yellow belly um, that's where they're developing they become then they become sexually mature and that's when they reach the silver eel stage so the silver eel and you can there was i want to say there was one up here by the way in terms of leptocephala um, these are kind of what the leptocephali of eels look like i don't know enough about leptocephali to be able to see which ones are which species but leptocephali kind of have very similar all look very similar to me um so american eel let's look up let's just actually go american eel silver eel okay so here you go this is that's not a great picture okay here you go so here is sort of like your silver eel stage ish it get, becomes much grayer in the back of this really white belly and what's interesting actually is um this is when they're migrating from fresh water to the salt water to the sargassum sea and they actually kind of change their body to fit that oceanic lifestyle um, their fins get a little bit thicker a little bit bigger their eyes get uh, significantly larger and their pectoral fins actually get larger this allows them for much better mobility and vision in the ocean but that's just to avoid predators and find other eels um, these fish are actually not really eating at this stage their digestive tract actually kind of dissolves and becomes absorbed by the body their entire goal when they reach this stage is they are getting to the sargassum sea and they are breeding and it's kind of um, guessed that they are actually um, I can't remember the exact terminology but they are that once they spawn they die um, there doesn't seem to be any you know silver eels migrating back up to grow it seems to be just like the salmon once they spawn they die um, and I say that because their reproductive act is very very poorly understood scientists know where these are spawning but when i looked into this um you know in my college years which is many more years than i care to admit on this on youtube uh, but suffice to say it was plenty of years ago um the reproductive act had not actually been really documented it's assumed that it seems to be uh bladrimus or can't remember the term but basically the eggs and the sperm are just positive and it's just willy-nilly whoever gets to where um, but how it happens from what I understand is not it's just not very well documented so anyway now this entire process um, you might be thinking how wonder how long this takes well this entire process can take 20 to 40 years these are actually relatively old age fish um, I believe that just the yellow eel stage alone can take somewhere between 20 and 30 years. Just that one stage can take an enormous amount of time. Um, the longer they spend in that yellow eel stage, the bigger they get. This Remember, the yellow eel is when they're growing. This is when they're growing, trying to get big. They were trying to get, you know, hefty. They want to make the most babies possible. So, um, now they are very cryptic. It's not excessively easy to find these because if they're remember they are extremely no nocturnal and they really only come out at night to feed so other than that they're buried deep in these cracks they want to go into these dark spaces and just grow and kind of hunker down get big 
and only come out when they're hungry when they're eating they're eating insects um, but they'll probably eat anything that they can get their mouth around and kind of swallow I imagine that they're pretty voracious predators when they're hungry now this fish is in trouble um, it is listed, I believe, as invulnerable and possibly endangered. And it's primarily in trouble from migration blockers, dams, things like that. When these eels are trying to migrate upstream, they, they can't get up there because of dams. And it's really kind of crazy because you can see here, they don't need a lot of water um, to migrate. They can actually migrate through very little water um, going over rocks going over wet grass um, they will it doesn't take much however that is still a problem plus the pollution siltation they are very susceptible to low oxygen content so they need some highly oxygenated water uh, or at least good oxygenated water um, so but now for the interesting fact that we're going to end the video on um, the life stage in and of itself I please go look up American Eel Life Stages, do a little deep, uh, deeper research. There's so much stuff going on there. It's actually incredible. So please go look up the life stages. Imagine having to go through basically six different body shapes throughout your life. I'd be, it'd be a nightmare. But the reason why I chose this fish is that it actually used to be heavily targeted as a food fish, especially by Native Americans. So the interesting fact, you know, we eat turkey for Thanksgiving. So finally, I can say happy Thanksgiving, everyone, for all my American people out there and for anybody across the world who celebrates Thanksgiving. And if you celebrate Thanksgiving on a different month, still happy Thanksgiving. Um, but what's interesting is the first Thanksgiving in America, it was, you know, there's a lot of this assumption, we eat turkey, we eat ham. Um, we eat all this stuff, but more than likely the very first Thanksgiving between the Native Americans and the Pilgrims was probably consisted of quite a bit of seafood. There's always that joke that, oh, they probably serve lobster at the first Thanksgiving. Well, more than likely, and you know, it's not very well documented, but more than likely eels were probably served to at the first Thanksgiving as well. So this is actually a fish that probably was served at the thanks first Thanksgiving for America. It's a little bizarre, but it was so heavily utilized by Native Americans for fish uh, for consumption that it was is it was almost certainly um, used at the first Thanksgiving. I thought that would be an incredibly interesting fact, and that is why this fish doesn't really fit our current timeline of saltwater freshwater, but it had a little bit of saltwater parts in it. But thank you guys so much again. I really appreciate it. Hope to see you again. If I don't, please be safe. Have a great day. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe if you do. I'd really appreciate it. Hope to see you again. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your loved ones. And peace.